Hi, I'm Nate and you're watching Photo Learningism. Let's get into Krita and let's look at how you can do more with it, particularly with a raw image. I'm working with Nikon, so I'm gonna bring my .NEF in here. That's the raw format that Nikon uses, but it should also respect the other major ones. Uh, bring them in. There is a loader that happens up front. I don't find this particularly useful, honestly, because none of the settings that I've done seem to have a significant effect on it. I just usually run with the default settings, which is usually attuned to the color palette of your monitor, and uh, that's generally good enough. Uh, for most applications. You may be familiar with other tools like Raw Therapy, like Darktable, which are amazing tools. They do great enhancements, denoising, sharpening that are second to none. However, what they cannot do is they cannot help you remove or touch up photos to the degree of you have something that you need to remove or alter. Those tools cannot help you with that. You can do it in Krita though. <laughs> to demonstrate this, what you need to do is in your brush sets there is a brush called clone you might think of it as a tool other tools like um, photoshop or lightroom i think they actually call it a tool it's not a brush but in krita everything is a brush or at least most everything is a brush all right so starting out with this picture i'm going to move on in and let's say i wanted to get rid of this drip i wanted to isolate just the spigot first step that we're going to do is we're going to use the surrounding and this is a pretty advantageous one because it's all uniform pretty uniform white with a slight gradient to it um, so i'm going to go get my clone brush at the zigzag one i'm going to use control click to select what's around it and we're just going to start working it off here now you'll notice how it has kind of a feathered edge to it that is actually uh the way i set it up you can do that under the brush preset editor where you can play with the hardness of it and um, the feathering a bit and the angle and all that stuff. Uh, don't be afraid to touch that stuff up or create a new copy of it. I also have stabilizer on here, which is helping me draw a little steadier as I go around this. That can be super useful uh, just because there is a rounded edge and rounded edges can be sometimes hard uh, to get looking good by hand this way. So what we do is again, where I'm resetting where I'm marking just to make sure I'm borrowing through the right color, blending it on. I'm gonna get as close as I can and then we're gonna go back and touch that up some. All right, now I'm actually gonna borrow some of this material and just try to get it just to the right point. And this can be a little tricky to guess correctly sometimes. Because you need it like just in the right spot. And that's kind of the only trouble with doing this. Don't want too much. All right, that's about what I'm going for here. All right, so now what I can do is I already went ahead and made a duplicate of this brush. What you do is when you go to edit it, when you make adjustments to it, in this case, I'm removing most of the fade and giving it a harder edge. Uh, what you would do is save it as a new brush preset and just give it a name, a different name, and save it. Once that's done, it'll appear over here as a copy, and you can use that duplicate brush going forward. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. Just going to select a space that I need, and this is a harder edge, as you can see. So we're just going to tidy this up just a little bit so it matches better. Oops. And what I might do is go back to my uh, softer one and again, just blend that just a tiny bit. I'm gonna come up here, borrow that, make it nice and tight. And that pretty much accomplishes what I set out to do. We have effectively removed that brush and again, thankfully, the uh, the background in this case was conducive to it. 
it's not impossible if you have more complex backgrounds. It just takes a lot more patience and attention to detail. And that's really kind of the gist of it, is just working at it and using the power of that cloning piece to uh, to remove the stuff that's not useful in your picture in case you had that scenario. I hope that's helpful. If it was, please do give me a thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you haven't done that already. And also, ask a question, leave a comment, and I'll do my best to point you in the right direction. I so much appreciate your support and watching this. I love you all. I'll see you at the next video.